Well, as I just pointed out to my friend Stephanie up here, um, we're not in Florida. <laughs> it was a major boo-boo. I copied the wrong file over and left the wrong zip drive at home. So I apologize. It was just it's just a bad title screen. So, but the content's all there anyway. So I think we'll be okay. Um, This is me. Nice to meet all of you. My name is Jay Epstein. I'm in from Fort Lauderdale. And I am the co-organizer of the Broward Drupal Users Group down there. And um, I just hit my third year anniversary in Drupal. Came from a 14-year IT director career. And, you know, like most Drupal guys, got bitten by it and just fell in love and just couldn't get enough. So basically, I went from my first meetup presenting there, and that's pretty much how I learned Drupal for that first year and a half, just kind of going through the learning curve of trying to find my way and also presenting at the same time. So um, I've given this presentation at the Orlando camp, the Broward camp, um, actually several of them. So I, I haven't seen any other camp that actually does a presentation on related content displays. So what I did with this one is, is I geared it more for the beginner level. So, by the way, who's really brand new to Drupal? Anybody? A couple. Um, would you say the rest of you guys are more like on the advanced side, intermediate, kind of in between? Okay, that's cool. Um, what we're going to talk about today is taxonomy. On a basic level, we're going to talk about some basic uh, data modeling, some very basic views, nothing heavy duty. It really is geared for the beginner type level situation. But as we all know, in all programming and dev work, there's usually seven different ways to do something. And related content displays is no different by far. I just chose this one because I think it's about the most generic way to get related content displays built out. You know, there are other ways, you know, uh, node reference, entity reference. It depends on what, what the scope of the project is and you know, what your end result is. So, but this is a really good way to just kind of get acquainted with the concept of relating content to another piece of content. So uh, buzzwords, very few actually. Vocabulary, term, and term reference. That's really all we need to worry about. And that's going to get us pretty far, actually. So we've all seen this all over the web for years. You know, what is a related content display? You're looking at a node, and over on the right-hand side, they're going to give you some other complementary uh, pieces of content that are directly, directly related to what you're looking at. Sometimes it's text. Sometimes it could be a video. It could be an image. It could be all kinds of crazy stuff. But the bottom line is that the two or the kind, you know, the uh, the related side is definitely a direct relation to what's being displayed on the main node. Think back to, especially with the advanced guys and the intermediate guys, before you got into Drupal, who knew, who had ever heard of the word taxonomy? I'm curious. We got, you guys did, really? I never heard it in my life. And I was given a job to build out a you know, small site, a little e-commerce site, and they wanted a related display. So I was like, yeah, sure, I could do that, no problem. And it was right in the middle of that really ugly Drupal learning curve piece. And when I saw that word, I just flipped out. I just came apart. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with that. But here's what happened. I was so confused by it. When I finally figured out how the thing worked, it kind of it fueled me to find a way to describe this to newcomers to Drupal in a far different way than I had to learn it. Well, like most of us had to learn it. So here's the basic hierarchy of how this whole thing works. You have a vocabulary, and then you have some terms, and that is the whole extent of it. So how does, how does this really you know, come to play building out a display? Let's forget the word taxonomy, and let's forget all of these other little buzzwords we were just talking about, and let's think about cable TV or a dish. If I said to you, I want to watch something that's related to history, what channel would I go to? The History Channel. If I want to watch something about golf, what channel would I go to? The Golf Channel. Well, when you're dealing with data modeling, 
of related displays, it's the ex exact same identical thing. So here's what I do. When I have to data model a related display, I actually create a taxonomy, of a, a taxonomy of vocabulary called site channel. And what that allows me to do is when I'm teaching this to end users who have no idea what that word means anyway, it's really very simple. Hey, content editor, when you're going to go ahead and put that blog post in, what site channel should it go in? Should it go in current events? Should it go in, you know, what is, what's, what is the, the definition of what you're putting in? And it really makes it a very, very simple learning curve there because all they have to do is just visualize the TV channel or the site channel and they know where to put this stuff. So as good developers, it's up to us to give them a nice, pretty, simple interface in which they know exactly what to do. So I played baseball for many years. I played semi-pro. So everything that I do as far as demos is always revolving around baseball. So this little sandbox site, which I'll show you in a second, is geared to baseball. So let's visualize this before we even look at a screen. So we have a little mini site about baseball. It's got some content types. It's got some pictures. Um, as you can see, baseball story, baseball equipment, and basic page. Those are the three content types I have to deal with. So using my analogy, if I create a vocabulary called site channel, my terms would be pitchers, catchers, first baseman, and so forth. So when I put content into the site, all I need to do go ahead and put the note in and then just tag which one of those site channels this is going to apply to. Pretty simple concept. Just a hint of advice, um, you know, just because this works for me doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you. I hope it would, but um, if you choose not to go this route or you have other ways of doing this, I recommend that you keep your vocabularies as small and compact as possible. It, also your terms as well. Because what happens is over time, you know, if you, if you allow users to put terms in, you'll wind up seeing the same term six or seven times. One's got a space in it, one's got a capital first letter. It really can get derailed very, very quickly. But if you kind of create this thing, you know, up front and you govern the control of how things work, especially, you know, with this, you know, with the vocabularies, it's just it's going to save you an awful lot of headaches maintenance wise later on so i would just recommend go easy with it and just go as small with it as you possibly possibly can it'll it'll serve you well same thing for the terms so let's just visualize this for a second like on the screen the previous screen we have a content type called baseball story this particular story that we're going to deal with is about catchers so all I need to do is put a term reference field on that content type and then just go ahead and tag the catcher's channel. Now I've just classified that piece of content. So, I mean, actually classification is all over the place. I mean, we all have these, these badge things, right? So in my case, it's got my name and down here it says presenter. But we're all attendees. The only difference is today I'm classified because I'm sitting in the hot seat. So I, it says presenter. Um, it's really all, that's all it comes down to. Come up with the most defined, straightforward approach to making that contact, uh, content unique as possible. The end piece of this is how do we get this thing to display out on a page? Obviously, this is going to be done with views. So, who has never worked with a contextual filter? Everyone has? A couple, a few people? Oh, good. Cool. Excellent. Never done it before? Awesome. That's actually very good because it, that's another one of those scary Drupal terms that freaked me out when I first saw it and I had no idea what it meant or how to work with it or what to do with it. But once I kind of figured out a way to interact with it, it actually became very simple. So what I'm going to show you guys is how to look at it. Very simple. <laughs> so here's what it comes down to. To get a clue and get your head around related content displays, you don't necessarily need to know what a taxonomy is. You don't necessarily need to know what a term reference is. You just need to understand how to model the data so that two things make sense with each other. And that's all it is. And views is going to be the one that's going to help us show that. So if you guys like step-by-step -step recipes, which I usually do, 
here you go. There it is right there. These are your six steps to actually make this stuff fly. Create the vocabulary, add some terms, add a term reference field on your content types. Keep going until you get through all your content types. Create the view, put the block on the page, and you're done. That's it. There's your six steps. So, let's look at this in real life. Okay, so here's my little sandbox site and baseballstuff.com. Pretty standard, no big deal. The pitcher's glove, the tools of ignorance, which I'll show you what that stuff is in a second. I actually jumped ahead and put this stuff in, but I'll show you where all these pieces are. So like I said, I'm big on the, on this, the channel concept. So here is my vocabulary called site channel, just like the TV channel concept I mentioned before. And just like on that slide before, here's all of my available terms. So my site being about baseball, I can now go ahead and enter any type of content, and now I have a way to actually put a tag or a classification or a name badge on that piece of content. So that's your step one on that recipe thing. If we go over to our content types, what you'll see is, is my term reference field. And it is to the site channel. So when I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a piece of content, let's assume I'm gonna do content. There you go. All I need to do is give it a title. There's my little drop down so I can classify this piece of content. I give it my body field, I hit save, and that piece is done. That's the mechanics of it right there. There's nothing more to it. So now, let's take a look at views. Now again, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm showing you the most generic um, kind of wide open approach to this. You know, if this was on a bigger enterprise site, would I do this? Definitely not. I wouldn't do it, you know, doing it, do it this way. However, I did it on this site. This is actually um, Navisite.com, which is a Time Warner uh, cloud-based ESP, uh, ISP. And when we show them this demo model of the related content displays across the whole site, um, and how we could really build out contextual displays, meaning where, all right, so here's the front page, but we can actually go down in the footer here, and if we go out to the topics, which technically are the site channels. Now, everything that you see here, including the slider region, all of these, these are called calls to action. We have some ROI tips. We got blogs. We have what's new. Um, featured products, even the menu. This whole complete display is built on exactly what I'm showing you now. Taxonomy related content displays. And when we switch off to another one of these topics, you'll actually see the slider is going to wind up changing out and everything else. Now we're going to start picking up some featured videos, some other, some other things. So there's a lot of nodes on this site. It's actually a pretty big site. So taxonomy is controlling I don't know what the exact number is. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I don't know, seven to 8,000 nodes the last time I looked. And each one of those things is all pretty much categorized to work, you know, work with this framework. So it's powerful stuff, and it works really well. It really does. So back to here. What I'm showing you is based on blocks. We just want to go ahead and show a right rail that's got this related content display in a block. So what I did was I created a block for related stories and related equipment, just like the two content types that I had shown you originally. We have a basic page and these two content, uh, content types. All I'm doing right now is just basically showing a title 
But let's talk about a contextual filter, because this is where the power of views becomes really, really cool. Once you understand how to work with these things, that's where you can really make views dance and do some good stuff. So if you look up in the URL, we've got, actually, let's do this. Let me go back a little bit. Let's go to the pictures glove. So we've got story, pictures glove, a different field is in. OK, so there, there's our node title. But the cool thing is Drupal is nice enough to actually put out up here what the taxonomy term ID of this particular node is. You just can't see it, but it's actually going along for the ride in the URL. So when we go to views and we say, OK, let's go ahead and create a rel related block, how do we know? how to show a catcher's related story on the catcher's note. Well, that's what the contextual filter does. Everything in Drupal has an ID, a number, a node number, a taxonomy term ID, same kind of thing. So what we're going to do when we create our contextual filter, we're going to say, OK, if this node has taxonomy term ID from the URL, that's going to be the default. And actually, once you select that, Views already knows what, you, what, you really, what your end result is, what you're trying to do. It's actually going to give you these checkboxes, low default filter from term page, and low, low default filter from node page. That's good for related taxonomy blocks. It's actually telling you, dude, click on this. This is what you want. And that's really all you need. Now, in this case, I only have one vocabulary. But like on the Navisite one, we have... Um, it's actually one vocabulary with, I think, about 150 individual channels. So that gets pretty powerful, but you could have multiple voc vocabularies. I'm not a fan of that, personally. Um, some guys you know, scream up and down. That's really not the right way to do it. I prefer to do it this way with one vocabulary with, with you know, multiple terms instead of multiple vocabularies with multiple terms. I find it a maintenance nightmare, and it's also tough to teach end users that really don't know what this stuff is, how to really interact with that. So I stay away from it. Um, other than that, these settings here, you're providing the default value, has taxonomy term ID, you hit a couple of check boxes. That is all you need. Once you save that, all you need to do is place this block on the appropriate page. So if we come over here to our blocks. And we take a look at our sidebar second. So here's our views. Related content block for the equipment. Here's our related content block for the story content type. Um, we're not going to worry about that front one there. And the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, when you're on a particular page, only show that block on, on the, the correct page. I think it's on this one. There you go. So I only want to see the story block when I'm on the equipment page. So now I can, there's other ways to actually govern what goes on here. You really could do it over here in the visibility settings. I try and stay away from that. I like to do it in here. But the, it's actually the same thing. It'll work the same way. It's really up to you which way you want to go with it. So let's see how it works. So if we go over here, the tools of ignorance, which is a story, here's our main node. And as you can see, the Tools of Ignorance is actually a pet name for catcher's gear. And the concept is if you're stupid enough to be a catcher where you have to wear that much protective equipment, you've got to be nuts. And I was a catcher for many years. So over here, here's our related content. And the catcher's mitt, there it is. And you'll see these things are actually toggling back and forth. But we got a problem. I got two of them. And I'm actually showing the catcher's mitt, but I'm also showing it over here. And that's a big mistake that I find that a lot of newcomers to Drupal when they're working with this, they don't know how to make that go away. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But um, that's the basics right there. There's really nothing more to it. It's just a couple of simple block views with contextual filter, and you're done. So let's take a look at this collision in node titles. Who knows about exclude filters? Has anyone used them? Anybody? Cool, then I can teach you something. Excellent, this will be worth it. Are you guys clear with what I've shown you so far as, you know, as far as setting up just these few pieces? Everyone 
Everyone good with it? Good. Anyone not? Anyone need me to go back over something? <coughs> yes, sir. Question for clarity. So in, in your content type, you need to have uh, one of the fields be a term reference field. Yes. So that it will be able to find, it will be able to find the taxonomy term somewhere else. Correct. Yeah. He had, he had mentioned, you know, he was asking on the content type, um, you know, how do we make this content be able to find each other? That's, you know, that's basically what you were asking. And the way that we do that is with this site channel field right here. That's, that's your term reference field. So that becomes a drop-down list for when you're entering in, let's say, a basic page or another node or whatever. You now have that little drop-down list to say, what does this content relate to? Yes, sir. Um, the question is, do you need the term ID in the URL for that to work as required? Well, actually, actually, no, you don't. Because the, actually, the term reference field is actually being output with the node. So if you look up you know, in any one of these, well, I mean, I, had, I do have clean URLs turned on here. Yes. Yes, it will. That's why the, let me go back to views and I'll show you just how slick that um, has taxonomy term ID. That's an extreme, I mean, there's a lot of other options that you can do with this. You, uh, depending on how you set up your vocabularies and your terms, there's a thing called with depth and you can really get into some pretty hairy, you know, data returns with that. But like I said before, I'm personally a fan of trying to keep things as small and manageable and simple as possible, especially on the dev side. Because if you can accomplish the dev side being uncomplicated, you're pretty much guaranteed that the UI side for the end user is going to be equally uncomplicated. So it's kind of like a selfish thing that I do. I'm trying to save myself support time. <laughs> I just, I don't want to have to do it if I don't have to. So if I can create, you know, a nice little elegant way to get this stuff in there, and it only takes three steps like I just showed you, cool, my job is done. And they're good to go. They can enter in their content, and everyone's happy. Okay, so let's talk about this node collision, like I was just showing you here, where when we were on one of these guys, is it different from an infielder's glove, and we're showing this again. Not cool. We don't want to do that. I mean, I see a lot of sites where that happens, and maybe it's planned. Um, my guess is no. <laughs> you know, it's just not supposed to be there. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go back to our view. And let's go right back to our has taxonomy term ID contextual filter. Now, we already went over all of this stuff here. But this is really tricky of, of Drupal, and it's almost kind of not cool. Let's see here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm gonna, actually, you know what? I'm going to change my, my way of thinking. I'm going to show you a different way to do this, which is actually, I think, will be a little bit more intuitive for you. Um, let's do. You guys familiar with NID, Node ID? I'm going to go back and I'm going to use this provide a default value thingy again. This time, what I want to look at now is I don't want to look at the taxonomy term. We've already identified that. We've created that contextual filter and that's so the view understands that, hey, I want to see stuff that's related to this particular node that's being looked at. But my problem is not on the taxonomy term side now. My problem is on the node ID side or on the title of the node that we're looking at. It's showing up in two separate places although it happens to be just rendering itself on the same page view. So we got a problem there. So if I tell this view, okay view, now go ahead and read the URL bar and make sure that whatever's being displayed in the URL bar does not show in the block. That's the trick right there. 
And like I said before, it's really kind of tricky to Drupal because if you don't scroll all the way down and actually click on more, you probably wouldn't have a clue that, that, that that's really sitting there waiting for you. So now let's see what happens. If I save this, now, now I got two of them. So here's my relation and here's my exclude of collision, which I like to call it. Save the view. Bingo. There we go. Now, let's see what happens. If we click on the pitcher's glove, oh, I got the same one showing twice. My bad. Let's see what I did there. <sighs> let's see. That looks good. Yeah, this, this is the boo boo right here. What was it, baseball stories? Uh, related story. Anyway, that is that exclude filter, which I just showed you, is the one that's actually going to remove that second identical node display there. So before, we were actually seeing this title and this title sitting here. Now we're only seeing the one because the, now with that exclude filter. Any questions on that piece? That exclude filter is the best thing since sliced bread because especially when you're getting into you know, right rail displays like that, um, the more intense the site gets, the more potential for node collisions like that. And the cool part is it's just that one little checkbox and site-wide, I don't care how many nodes you have, I don't care how many terms you have, um, you're pretty much guaranteed nothing's going to collide on you. As a matter of fact, the Navisite site when you get into the um, the blogs, check this out. So we got all kinds of cool stuff going on here. A typical blog. Go to topics. Check out all of these topics on the on that left hand side there, and that's where I mean this is the majority of this site. You know, as far as node node count basically. Um, so when you click on one of these guys. You're pretty much guaranteed that if there is another blog post that's going to show here, it's never ever going to show a duplicate over here. So, so let's take a second and sit back. Who's got questions? Who's working on a project where this has tripped them up, or you're trying to do something special that's kind of inviting you? Anybody? Come on, guys. Devs that don't have a question with a problem, come on. Yeah. I got one. Yeah. This might be too bizarre. Okay. But I got a view, uh, view listing nodes, right? And I want to filter on taxonomy. Mm -hmm. But the taxonomy is on a different content type, and the nodes I'm listing are related to those nodes of that other content type, but they're related to uh, mm -hmm. no graph view. Okay. So you're unable to return a set of nodes that you really want to see then, right? Yeah. I okay. Uh, you know, the taxonomy is, on, is not on the nodes that I'm listing. Okay. It's on the reference. What he had just mentioned was that he has a situation that it actually fits right into this model that we're talking about here. He has some nodes, he's got some term references, but on a particular node type that he'd really like to see a data return on, he has no way to do that because he doesn't have a way to get that content related over. Is that correct? Am I, am I right? Yeah, I think we're on the same page. Okay. So it's really the same kind of content. Actually, you know, I'm going to go back to Navisite for a second. I mean, I, I don't have rights to log into this site anymore. They kind of closed me out once I launched this thing. All that legal dev mumbo jumbo thing. But here's the deal. Let's assume I have, um, thinking back, let, I think there's about 55 content types on this site. Guess how many types of content can relate to each other? Throw out a number. It's a number. I'm, I'm giving you a hint. 55. That's correct. That's exactly right. <coughs> so what that does is it guarantees me and it guarantees the content editors the ability. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to use it, but I'm giving them the tool to use that. So now there's a, there's a whammy side to that because if 
you allow that vocabulary to expand to like a whole ton of references, then things can get really ugly because they could be tagging the wrong, the wrong field. Like remember I mentioned before where, let's say they have the word catcher. Well, Becky put it in with a space before the first C. Johnny put it in with a capital C. Um, Eloise put it in with a space on the end. She hit the space bar by mistake. I just don't, so that technically, those are three like terms, but they're completely different as far as Drupal sees them. They all have three individual taxonomy term IDs. They have nothing to do with each other. So that's why I keep this thing as closed as I possibly can. Like I said, it's a selfish move on me. But what I do, the concept of the... Um, the site channel, that's kind of why I do this, because most devs don't do it like this. They don't give this a very linear approach. They give it more of a very um, literal approach where you can have 755 you know, term, reference field, uh, term references. You can have 26 vocabularies. I just don't find that to be an efficient way to model, to model this, you know, this kind of stuff. It may be okay. <laughs> if you're in a situation where you don't need to worry about displaying related content. That's probably a good reason to allow the thing to you know, balloon up like that, where you want to be able to classify things extremely well and then have a view output a full taxonomy term. Matter of fact, have you, anyone ever used that, the actual taxonomy term view that Drupal gives you? Anybody? Oh, we got one. There you go. Anybody else? Do you guys even know it's there? Let me show it to you. It's pretty cool. Uh, and so I can be clear on the cookie pie limit. Because no, it's not a limit. Uh, that's just yeah, it's just the analogy. You know, I just threw that number out. But in in that in Navisite, that is the magic number. That's you know. So if I have fifty five content types, I actually will allow f the interaction of content fifty you know through those fifty five. So if I'm going to enter in a video, let's say. Um, let me give you an example of one of those bad boys. Um, videos. So when I created this content type for them, obviously we have the most recent, you know, that's just a view sorted by uh, descending date. But we got editor's picks, and then we have ones that aren't editor's picks. However, each one of these videos has that term reference field on it. The same way these guys over here, the polls do, the same way the sliders do, the same way each one of these pieces of content. So, you know, throughout that whole site, here's what, basically what I'm do, using taxonomy for in this site, is I'm building out contextual displays. Who's, who's using the context module? Come on, got to be somebody. There's one. No one else? Okay, have you heard of it? Have you heard, heard of it? Here's what it does. The context module allows you to create a action or a, a, a result. So let's say I create a context of catchers, like on, like on this side here. I can create a, con well, I don't actually have the, the module in here, but if I did, rather than doing, well, in as an accompaniment to what I'm doing with this related content stuff, I could actually say, okay, I want to create a context of catcher. So what's going to happen is when the page loads, this module is going to come up and say, okay, are we on the catcher's context display? And if we are, I can then say, okay, if we're on that particular context, I want this right rail to be pink, I want this title to be blue, and I want a picture of a catcher up here, and I want a catcher's mitt down here. So I can visually build out what is getting sent out and what, actually what Drupal is going to display based on condition. That's what the context module does. So that same concept that I just described with that module, I did over here without having to load a module or configure a module or have to allow these end users to interact with that module. Because if you think about this, if I set this up in context and, you know, this is a big site that's got, you know, gazillions of nodes and different content types and, you know, many, many people that actually log into this thing and drive it every day including the UK domain, which is actually a separate site from this. So if I la allow that to be wide open and configurable, you know, configurable by these end users, I just bought myself into a whole load of potential support issues because they need, if I allow that, they're going to need to create a new contextual display. 
let's say they say, hey, Jay, we just came up with this brand new content type. We've got to have it. And it's got to have these fields. And it's got to relate to this other stuff. And it's got to be pink and green only when you're on that one contextual display. I now have to allow them to go in and interact with that module. And I found over time that I've been doing this, allowing end users into, into you know, the, context, uh, the context module is really a bad scene. <coughs> it just doesn't go well. And it's always egg in your face. You just never get away from it. So that's the main reason why I built this, this, this one out the way I did. I govern everything. I govern the display. I govern the, I, I, they're allowed to put terms in. But other than that, I control everything else on the back end with views. So let's get back to yours for a second. So the reason I went into this whole long-winded little tangent thing is that when I use the concept of a site channel, it's, I'm still going back to that same cable box concept. So here's the deal. You can't remove channels off of the cable. Well, I guess, I guess you could if you don't pay for them. But like basic cable, it's, you know, something like that. You know, it, it just out of the box, when you plug that thing in, you have 150 channels, let's say. I try and model this stuff the same identical way when I, when I use this site channel you know, thought process. So in a situation like yours, what I would probably do is try and go back to the vocabulary and say, OK, can I generalize this down into one vocabulary? Do you have one? Is it more than one vocabulary or just one? It's multi-vocabulary. It's multi. You see, that's, that's where I found that's the stuff that bites you. It becomes, it becomes a lot more of a complex model where it doesn't necessarily have to, you know? Um, actually, most, actually, all the sites that I've done with any kind of related displays or you know, stuff being fired off on that right side has always been done um, using this, just a single. Um, I mean, would something like this work? I mean, if, if you were able to kind of kind of massage back what you got there and bring it down into one, could you make something like this fly? No, because what's going on is that the, the terms are on one content. Only on one, okay. And, uh, but let's, let's say it's, um, what we're doing here is uh, performers. Mm -hmm. And the performers are related to uh, a band. Okay. Right? And then I got another content type that's performances. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to filter the performances mm -hmm. by the performers. Okay. So the performers are related to the band. Right. Uh, and then the performance things are different. Okay. What he's saying is he has a specific data model that's kind of based on, you know, performances, music, you know, music, bands, um, you know, different types of stuff. So multiple content types with multiple vocabularies with multiple terms. What I would do, <clears throat> you know, not you know, not really knowing what he's got or ever seeing what he, what you know what he's got going on there is I probably wouldn't use taxonomy in that kind of situation. What I would probably do is go over to a node reference or actually an entity reference type situation. Um, it's like I said before, there's always seven different ways to do stuff in Drupal, and actually any kind of development, there's always multiple ways to do it. You gotta scope what it is that you have up front, and then also at the same time, be intuitive enough to scope it two years down the road. What is the site gonna put, potentially you know, build, it, build itself out to? So I use taxonomy on a very generic you know, type of playing field. It's pretty much where, a situation where I don't have a whole bunch of different content editors. I don't have a need to get any more multi-dimensional. Now, in his case, he has a need to get multi-dimensional. You know, because we got bands that relate to albums, that relate to uh, musicians, that relate, you know, you know, it's like a multiple relation kind of situation. There, I wouldn't use taxonomy. That I would actually do with an uh, entity reference. I've got that going. I would do that because Using, using the, the, the content type reference field um, rather than the taxonomy term reference field, that allows you to do a lot more powerful filtering in views before that data is actually output anywhere. So you can manipulate things. You can rewrite the output of fields in views. You can, um, you, know, you can really make that thing, you could bend that thing to your will any which way. Where this, what I'm showing you, the rules are a little bit more strict on what you can and can't do. Actually, I, I shouldn't say that. <clears throat> it's a little more regimented, and it's meant to be that way, where what you need is a little bit more abstract, but where things can react appropriately 
on your control on the view. So that's what I would probably do. I would go back to a referencing kind of thing and then just go ahead and tell views, okay, when I'm on, either on, if you're using context or if you're not using context, you know, just show this, you know, based on what's being shown in the main window. So I think that'll work for you. Anybody else? Anyone else have any kind of weird things going on? Any questions? That's it? Okay. I purposely did this kind of short and sweet because I figured at 5 o'clock you guys really are just starting to go like this, like I am too. So. Yes, I'm sorry. Once you've got the uh, taxonomy set up, yeah. you've created these views that rely on text and contextual filter. Yes. On, on the view, you mean? Oh, okay. Let's go over here to my favorite, the catcher. So this here is a story that has a, a um, taxonomy term associated with it. Yes. And then all you've done is just hold it on the story pages to display related content. Correct. That's correct. That's 100% correct. She was asking, how is this, you know, the, so right now we're looking at a story. Like, you know, we can see that up here in the URL. And over here, this related content block is actually the baseball equipment content type. Okay, so, okay, so this is, what we're looking at is a story content. The block is referring to the related equipment. Yes. Type as opposed to the story content. That's correct. That's correct. That's right. That's exactly right. What, what she was asking, asking was, you know, how is this being, how is this catcher's equ uh, baseball equipment block being displayed here on this particular story? And that's all just happening right over here with good old fashioned blocks, like we've all done a gazillion times when we configure the block, you know, where do we want to show it? This is, but you know what though? It's the same identical data model. The only difference here is that there's a, a ton more content types and a ton more nodes, but it's the identical. I mean, I wish I could log in so I can show this to you, um, but they just, they won't let me, I guess. Um, but this is set up the same identical way. So all of those content types, you know, the 50 plus, they have, it's the same, they have that same little drop down field. Well, in, the, in their case, there's actually, I split it out into two, you know, for a UI feature to make it a little more pretty. Um, but they have access to all of those terms on every content type in there. And that's, that's, that's the power that drives it. Yes? yes. So now that entity is very true to the liberal, have you tried to do any of this relation between nodes and entities with things like media? He was asking, you know, now with the, um, the birth of the entities, you know, in Drupal 7, have I gone to that, you know, that type of model? And the answer is yes. And more often than not, that's always going to be my first approach, especially on a bigger site, because I always need to anticipate that they're going to come up and call me and say, hey, Jay, you know what? You made this killer data model. We launched a site. It's great. But you know what? The executives want to add 25 new content types, you know, over the next six months. And it's like I was saying before, where in a situation like that, where you can't necessarily anticipate what this thing can balloon into, that's where I would stay away from taxonomy because you got some limitations, you know, and it's, it's you know especially on the on the on the back end side. I would take advantage of the entities as much as you possibly can when you're dealing with stuff like this. This this particular presentation really is geared for just a beginner level conceptualization of what is a related to, you know display and what's the quickest down and dirty way to get this thing to work. And also just a way to kind of introduce you to, especially the contextual filter, and the second most important one, which is that exclude filter, which not a lot of guys know about. So um, that was the main purpose of just, you know, getting, getting this presentation together. But on a data model level, um, is it always the optimum way to go? Definitely not. It, you you got to scope it with each individual project, you know, and, and see what the end result would be. Yes. 
possibly trying to show related videos on a maze based on taxonomy is very expensive. Yes, definitely. It definitely can. Um, I built out a, a data model using, uh, actually using the ECK. Have you used that before? The Entity Construction Kit? Anybody ever gotten into entities at all? And actually creating your own entity? It's pretty slick. Do yourself a favor, and when you get back home and you got some time, take a look at the ECK. You guys remember CCK from Drupal 6? Right? Content Construction Kit? It's the same concept. They gave you a really cool, slick little UI but instead of just working with individual fields, which is what CCK was, ECK. So, I tell you what, I'm gonna throw a question out to you. You guys know what's up. If I said to you, I need you to build me a Drupal site where I can enter an invoice, how would you do it? I need you to create me a way to enter invoices in Drupal. Now, think about this, though. So ha what, is, what are the components of an invoice? You have a header record. So I am billing this to Jay. Jay's contact information, the date of the invoice, um, what kind of customer I am, all of these little fields that identify the header of that invoice. And then you've got rows below it, the invoice items. In Drupal, how would you actually create a header record with a related multiple record display right below it? You really can't. <laughs> you, I mean, you got content types, you have fields, but if you want to create a node, an invoice node, right? Well, I need to be able to attach all of those line items to that invoice node. How do I do it? Because I could have one invoice line, or I could have 700 invoice lines, but they all are attached to that header record. Well, if you take a look at entities, entities is a tool that allows you to data model to your will. So you could actually go in and create an entity called invoice, and then you attach a thing called a bundle to this entity. So now when you enter in an invoice node, that bundle, which are your line items, is already on that same screen. So you create your, you're creating one node, which is actually the header record, and then below it, you could have your 700 invoice lines. So that's another way to take a look at even situations like yours, um, and also like, like he was mentioning with videos, the ECK is a really, really powerful way to data model things where you want to, out of the box, create a parent-child record relationship. So that's something to definitely take a look at if you have situations where you need that kind of a you know, data model. I just looked at it recently and I was blown away once I figured out how the thing works. It was just incredible. It really is wild. Yes? She would asked if what I'm doing here will have any, you know, indirect or direct um, result when Drupal 8 comes out. I'm going to give you a really wishy-washy answer, and the answer is yes and no. <laughs> um, I've looked at, you know, Drupal 8 just very, very high level. Um, here's what I can tell you. Entities that are in Drupal 7 are an automatic guaranteed port over to Drupal 8. Okay, that framework is going along for the ride. Is taxonomy? Yeah, it will. Um, and I think if you use a, like a migration process, like, like if you use data export or something like that, where you output the stuff into a view and then get it out to a you know, CSV file, I'm sure you can migrate the stuff in with feeds without a problem. Long term, is it the right way to go? No, I think entities are, to be honest with you. Um, I really believe that in my heart because I don't see that concept going away because the power to be able to model data at that level without having to stay within the confines of a content type is, I mean, that's a really, really powerful set of keys to drive the bus with. And once you get the, you know, the skill set to really go into that ECK and design your own data model, this, and the other part of the ECK, you know, working with entities, is that it's an extremely, extremely fast and efficient way, database, you know, database side, to return data because it's sitting in the same table. <laughs> it's n you don't have to go out and worry about views, you know, creating relationships and joins and, you know, ins and outs. You know, entities, everything in Drupal 7 is an entity. You know, menus are entities, uh, nodes are, all of these things are. So they're all addressable 
and grabbable in views. Where if you don't use it, you, go, you just go by the content type model, you're basically restricted to what Drupal allows you out of the box, which is you know the content type with some fields. That's really it. So, you know, like I said before, there's multiple ways to look at this. You know, taxonomy is definitely a really quick, down and dirty way to do it, and you know, and get yourself going depending on the site that you have to build. Um, you know, you can even go back and use Node Reference. It's an old module, and it's kind of it's it's not phased out. It's still it's still out there, but entities have definitely taken its place. You know, big time. So that's actually three different ways to take a look at a relational type situation and just kind of scope it to whatever you know fits your needs. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, he was mentioning you know, using Solar Search, and you know. I, that's a whole nother conversation there. I mean, because that's a really huge topic. With that's that's very very in depth. Um, it's way way out of the scope of you know this kind of stuff. However, going back to what I said with the entities, the you know, that's the magic of using the ECK, and especially if you if you're going to start looking at these like the outside indexing search you know kind of you know mechanisms. Your job, you know, being a good dev, is to make sure that you return that search result as quickly as you well as quickly as computer possible. And if you can do that by crafty data modeling, you know, with you know with the ECK, I definitely recommend it highly. Because you could really, really, you know, turn out some really big search result stuff, and it's just instantaneous. Because it's not a situation where we're worried about multiple joins and relations. No, it's like, bam, one place, zoom, there's everything. It's there is no back and forths and loops and backs, and it just doesn't go that way. So, um, I would definitely go and take a look at that. Big time. Anybody else? That's it. Guys, thanks for staying awake. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of it. I know that exclude filter is, is going to come in handy for every one of you. At one time, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that dude showed me that. I know how to do that. That's worth this all by itself. So thanks again, guys.